Hello and welcome to Samdance Couch. Today I'm going to show you how you can get Windows on your Steam Deck without getting rid of SteamOS and even without using a micro SD card. Instead, I'm going to use an SSD for my setup. Why should you rather use an SSD over a micro SD card? Because micro SD cards are not built to withstand constant heavy read and write cycles an operating system like Windows demands. It does work, but your card's life will get dramatically shortened, just by Windows doing all its background tasks alone. And since big quality micro SD cards are not cheap these days, using an SSD, which are designed for a lot of read and write cycles, is a good alternative. In my case, I happen to have this water damaged HP laptop available to me, which literally internally fried. The good news is that it not only has Windows 11 already installed on it, it also has an SSD, which I'm going to repurpose for my Steam Deck. I bought this cheap external enclosure from a company called SSK. It comes with a USB port for M2 NVMe SSD drives for around $17. It supports SSDs up to 4GB and has USB 3.2 Gen 2. Unfortunately, Amazon delivered my package in a very smashed up way. But I was lucky enough that everything inside the box stayed in one piece. The enclosure comes with two USB cables, which could barely be any shorter, two screws, a screwdriver, a copper washer, as well as a thermal pad. You could in theory buy this extra dock from JSOX, but it's way more money, so I'm going to go with the external SSD enclosure in my regular dock instead. Let's get to work! This is the damaged HP laptop that I'm quickly opening up to get to the SSD. And there it is! One more screw to get the SSD out of its old home and it is ready to get repurposed. My SSD is only 256GB, but that should be enough for now. The enclosure supports SSDs up to 4GB if I want to upgrade in the future. Putting the SSD into the new enclosure is pretty easy and reminds me a little bit of my PS5 SSD install I did earlier this year. The SSD slides right into its context counterpart of the enclosure. Then we have this copper washer which is going to keep the SSD from rattling around. A screw goes into the washer from the opposite side. The thermal pad goes right on top of the SSD and is being held in place by its sticker underside. The shell slides right over the components. One last screw outside to finish the install. Done. You could connect the SSD directly to your Steam Deck, but it is easier to have power to the deck plus a mouse and keyboard to finish the setup. So I'm using my JSOX dock that I also reviewed on this channel. Press the volume minus and the power button at the same time till you hear a beep. This is how we get to the boot manager of the Steam Deck. Since I'm using the SSK enclosure, my device is called SSK Storage. Quickly highlight it with the help of my keyboard and hit return. And boom, Windows 11 is booting on the Steam Deck straight away. We are going to need to install some additional drivers for the Steam Deck. But first Windows 11 is noticing that the PC hardware has changed and wants new security settings like a new pin. The screen is on the wrong orientation right now, which we will fix after we are able to log in. Setting up Wi-Fi, which actually works right out of the box and didn't even require an extra driver for the Steam Deck. We have to put in the password for our Wi-Fi router and connect Windows to it. To re-log in, we need to get a code sent to our email. Put the code in and then we get to set a new login pin code for Windows itself. By the way, navigating with the mouse controls being set to the wrong orientation of the screen can be challenging and a game all by itself. Not a fun one though. 
And we are finally logged in and have access to the desktop. Time to fix the screen orientation. Right click on the desktop, select display settings, display rotation and then landscape. Now let's install the Steam Deck drivers. Valve has its own support website for the Windows drivers of the Steam Deck. Download all the drivers as stated on the page and put them all in one folder to not lose track. Let's start the Steam Deck driver installation process by installing the AMD drivers first. The file's name starts with APU. Keep clicking into the folders till you see the file Setup and double click it. Installing these drivers can be a little tricky since it requires a reboot. When the setup is running, be prepared for the Steam Deck to reboot. When the screen goes black and the fans turn off, press and hold the minus and the power button again till you hear the beep. Then select your SSD drive. If you miss the right moment, like I did, and the Steam Deck boots back into SteamOS, it's no big deal. Just shut down the Steam Deck and boot it up again, also by holding the volume minus and the power button at the same time till you hear a beep. Windows will yell at you that you didn't eject the USB drive correctly, which we will just kindly ignore and set our screen orientation back to landscape, because the installation of the drivers set the screen up wrong. Right click on the desktop, display settings, display rotation, landscape. Double click on the setup again and the installation will continue where we left off. This time we won't need to reboot anymore. Now onto the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi already works, but for good measure I did install this and it didn't break anything. So go ahead, install the file starting with rtlw-lan and click on the file plainly called install. Now it is time to install the Bluetooth drivers. The folder's name starts with rtblue and inside double click the install driver file. Windows is being overprotective here. Just click on more info and then run anyway. You are going to have to do this a few times. Next we are installing the SD card reader. The file's name starts with Bayhub and inside we start the installation with the file Setup. At the end you are given the choice to reboot. Click on No if you don't need the micro SD card right now and want to continue the remaining drivers like I did here. The last two installers take care of audio. I recommend extracting each installer folder first instead of working inside the zip folders like we did before. First extract the folder starting with CS35. Open it up and under Windows 11, like noted in the description of the driver website, right click on the file CS35i41 with the setup information and click show more options and then hit install and then open. Wait a few seconds for the installation to finish, there is no visual feedback. Now onto the last driver. The file's name starts with NAU. Extract the file, open the folder and right click the file name NAU8AL21. Right click, select show more options and then hit install and then open. Again, no visual feedback. Wait a little bit and we are good to go. Now it is finally time to have some fun. I have an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate membership, which was pretty much the only reason for me to even try Windows on the Steam Deck. On a whole, I'm very happy with SteamOS and I will continue using it as my main system. But for some stuff, like Game Pass games, having the Windows option is a good thing to have. So I'm going to try out Minecraft Bedrock. You can find all your Game Pass stuff inside the Microsoft App Store or the designated Xbox Game Pass app. Installing works pretty well and pretty fast. The Wi-Fi drivers work very well under Windows for me. And here we are. I'm logging into our realm, which is Halloween themed right now. The controls are smooth and I had no problems navigating around the world. I was able to hook up my Xbox Series controller over Bluetooth as well, which makes console-like gaming on the Windows deck a breeze. Next up is Gears 5, one of my all-time favorite game series. Works right away and plays very smooth. Sie schalten den Spender! Einfach mal, mein Gott! 
So this is the almost pain-free Windows 11 experience on the Steam Deck. Let's look at the pros and cons. Cons are that with the external SSD you always need to have the drive connected to your deck at all times. And if you want power too, you are either going to need a dock or a powered USB hub. This makes it less portable and really should be an at-home setup. Windows itself also taxes the hardware more, so you are going to hear the fan kick in more often compared to using SteamOS. You also won't have the nifty performance tweaking options SteamOS has, like FPS limiter, thermal power limit, GPO clock control and so on. The plus sides using Windows like this is you are not hurting the original SteamOS installation. You can go back to your SteamOS experience at any time and switch back and forth between Windows and SteamOS. All Windows games stay on the SSD and it won't get bad wear and tear like a micro SD card would by using Windows on it. Valve promised they are going to offer a dual boot option in the future, so that SteamOS and Windows can live both at the same time on the internal memory. But I find my solution for now to be clean and relatively painless, especially since I don't plan on playing on Windows too much. Of course, if you wanted to stay with Windows, then you should consider installing Windows internally and get rid of SteamOS. I personally can't recommend that though. If you want the pick up and go experience, like a console with your Steam Deck, SteamOS is the way to go. I hope I could give you some inside information about the process of running Windows on the Steam Deck and could inspire you to try new things with your deck. How about you? Are you going to install Windows on your Steam Deck or just stay exclusively with SteamOS? Let me know in the comments section of this video. Thank you for watching and if you would like to see more of these videos and more cool tech and games, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel. Until then, see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch.